Hello my friends and welcome back to another Brotato Guide. Today I'm going to go over something that's been requested of me a few times, and that is what is the best starting weapon for every single class? You can get some idea of this by watching my class guides at this point. There's a guide for pretty much every class or by looking at my weapon tier list, which has detailed information about every single weapon. But I do sometimes in my class guides use weapons that aren't the optimal choice for that character. So. And also, of course, it's really nice to have all the information in one place, so we are going to go through, talk about the best weapon for every single character. J before we begin, I should give you just some quick notes about what that means. So I'm going to be talking about the best starting weapon. That's not necessarily the weapon that you will end up finishing with, although it is, in many cases, you're just going to buy six of these weapons and take them all the way to the end game. A lot of characters are going to have the same best weapon as other characters, because some weapons are just better than others, and I am going to take into account the the best weapon for the character. And we'll be talking about for getting wins on Danger 5. This is not considering their utility in Endless Mode, or 182% runs, or modded Brotato. This is for vanilla Danger 5, which I think is what most people need this information for the most. Other than that, let's just get right into it. So, we are going to start with the very first character in the game, the Well-Rounded. Well-Rounded has a, a well-rounded selection of weapons. You have your choice between melee and ranged weapons, although you don't have the only sort of top-tier melee weapon you have access to is the stick. The ranged weapons, the best ones, are the shotgun and SMG that you have access to. And of these weapons, I think that the well-rounded is going to do absolutely best with the SMG. That's going to be the, the most natural build for you, and you're going to hear that a lot as we go through this list. One reason I think you want SMG over stick is just that you have plus 5 max HP, so you don't need the HP from primitive weapons as much. The bonus speed works a little better with ranged weapons, um, and submachine guns the best of the, the ranged weapon options for this character. The Brawler. Brawler only has three weapon options, and it's all unarmed. Of these, the Fist is by far and away the best. You don't want hands, obviously, because you are a killing class, so the pacifist build with hands, while totally doable on the brawler, it's going to be easier if you're killing stuff, and fist just does more DPS than claw, it's as simple as that, so fist is overall better. For the crazy, you are going to want, so crazy is, actually has a couple options I think, there's in fact, any of these weapons I think are viable. In my class guide for the crazy, I use the Thief Dagger, which is the most fun, I think, if not necessarily the most optimal. You start with a knife, which does give you a little bit of a head start towards a knife build, and I think that overall the knife build is going to be the best, but the difference between knife and the other weapons is not enormous. Um, I think either shuriken or scissors works quite well as well. The extra range on these weapons helps a lot with all of these weapons, um, and in fact I think any of these weapons is very close to equally viable, like they're all at least sort of 7 or 8 out of 10, and I think that the knife build is like a 9 out of 10. So it's, uh, it's not a huge difference, but on the crazy I think that the best build is the knife. For the ranger, you have your choice of guns, and you might think that the best one is going to be the crossbow, because the ranger gets bonus range and skills with range, or the pistol, because the ranger starts with a pistol, but of course, when you have the option of a submachine gun, it's the best gun, and you should just take the submachine gun, so the best starting weapon for the ranger is the submachine gun. You'll probably sell your pistol at some point, and just keep buying SMGs and shotguns, just high tier weapons. Um, pistol is pretty bad, actually, I think it's the worst of the guns. I guess not counting medical gun, and so you're going to end up wanting to swap that out for more submachine guns or higher tier weapons later on down the line. Mage is kind of a tricky one, actually. So mage looks like you want to have burning damage. So you would think wand or maybe torch would be good or one of those other elemental weapons. Um, but the actual best weapon for mage, and I talk quite a bit about the reasons for this in my mage guide, which you should definitely check out if you have not, are is the taser. The reason mostly is just that burning damage doesn't stack, so if you have six wands you will be 
reapplying this burning effect to the same enemies over and over and not actually gaining any DPS. The taser can apply the burning effect from the scared sausage just fine on its own. It also gives you the support weapon tag, so it's tons of extra money. Um, and the defensive stats help a lot as well. So definitely go for the taser on the mage. Avoid having more than one weapon that applies burning in your inventory at a time. Maybe two, but the overall the the best thing to do is to just have five tasers and a flamethrower on into the late game when you find eventually find a flamethrower. Although you can substitute in a wand if you can't find a flamethrower. For the chunky, so you get huge max HP boosts and damage from maximum HP. And most importantly, for deciding what weapon you're going to use, you your percent speed modifications are reduced by 100%. This means that weapons that slow down your movement speed don't slow down your movement speed, and items that slow your movement speed don't slow your move speed. The advice that you see a lot of the time for Chunky is that you should go for the Chopper to kind of double down on healing received from consumables, and because it scales with HP and you'll have a little more maximum HP, but you actually have plenty of damage already, I think, because of your percent damage scaling with HP. Um, and also, you have plenty of consumable heal, plus three is pretty good already, and you are tagged with pickups as one of your shop biases, so you are more likely to find consumable healing items in the shop. So I think Chopper actually sort of doubles down on things you already do well, and you want to make up for the downsides of the character, which are that you don't have other healing options. Another thing that you'll see a lot of the time is Go Ghost Scepter. It seems pretty natural because you scale your damage for HP, and Ghost Scepter helps scale your HP, but I think that the damage scaling is not strong enough to sort of make up for the lost damage scaling of Ghost Scepter, and ranged weapons really want to heal using Lifesteal, which the Chunky can't use. So the best weapon for the Chunky, I think, is the Spiky Shield. Great weapon tags, one of the best weapons in the game, lets you build armor, which works really well, of course, with your maximum HP. Each point of armor increases the value of each point of HP by six and two thirds percent. And when your damage scales with armor and then is scaled further by the HP gain from the chunky, really powerful. You also have no downside from the blunt weapon tag because you can't lose move speed. So definitely go with spiky shield for the chunky. The old. Old, I think, has a couple builds. So the small map makes it easier for you to go with the wrench, uh, because then your turrets will all spawn sort of in one place. You could also go with shotgun, but I think overall the wrench build is slightly easier. Um, though if you are having trouble or just don't like engineering builds, I think shotgun is the sort of second best build for this character. Slowing enemies is actually kind of fun as well, so you could try the taser or enemies walking slowly towards you over landmines is fun, but I think those are going to be worse options overall than the turrets um, or the shotgun if you just want ranged damage. So I, I recommend going for the wrench, but as a backup option, try the shotgun. The lucky is a weird one. So lucky is mostly not going to gain damage from your actual weapon choice. You rely on your luck to deal damage, and so our weapon choice is going to be something that just is designed to keep us alive. In this shop, there are really two weapons that are best defensively. The first is the slingshot, which is a, a very good defensive weapon because you can build lifesteal on it, and each bounce applies the lifesteal chance, so slingshot is one of the better healing items in the game. But the weapon that I actually suggest you use is the rock. You will have to repair your move speed, because unlike the chunky, the blunt weapon will still slow you down. But when you don't need the damage, and you already don't, you know, you have bad attack speed, so you're not really going to be getting damage from your weapons anyways, rock is a really good item for defenses, because each level of rock gives you either more HP or more armor. It has the primitive and blunt weapon tags, which are... Um, Primitive is the best weapon tag in the game for 15 HP, and Blunt gives you tons of armor and HP as well, and then the rocks give you more armor and HP, and that will keep you alive, which will let the Lucky's uh, effect just go off. If you want to see this in action, definitely check out my 
class guide for the lucky and you you might be doubting the rock but you won't once you have seen how fun it is in actual play for the mutant we're back to an old favorite here we once again have a bunch of options one of which is a submachine gun and a bunch of which aren't so it's submachine gun time baby for the mutant i think you could definitely go for sticks as well are quite good um in particular because they are cheap and sticks will scale really well with so they the percent item price penalty is not as bad because the sticks have a very cheap base price so they're still easy to buy but overall i think you're just going to be better off just grabbing the submachine gun and going to town all right let's get the generalist so generalist is going to You'll, you'll end up with two weapons, but we have to pick one to start, because you can only have three melee weapons and three ranged weapons. Um, and for this these purposes, the shuriken, I believe, counts as one of your ranged weapons, not one of your melee weapons, even though it scales with melee damage. But, yeah, so it's, it's ranged there. Um, but that's not the weapon we're going with. The one that we're going to go with is the Cacti Club. Cacti Club is normally a pretty bad weapon because it needs both melee and ranged damage to scale. But the Generalist, of course, gets both of those. It's also a primitive weapon, so your other weapon, your second weapon, can be the Slingshot. And then you have a full six primitive weapon tags, which is very nice. You could also go Shuriken plus another precise weapon if you wanted to do that. But I think that the, the primitive weapons are going to be better overall. These are also just really strong weapons. Um, they both will help you a ton scaling with lifesteal, which is really nice, so that, that lets you build lifesteal, and generally on ranged characters you want to build lifesteal, so that will be a really solid advantage. And the generalist more or less has no abilities. This shop ability is pretty ignorable, so building the best weapons available I think is really important. On the Loud, honestly, you can pick pretty much anything on this character. You will see a lot of people go for the farming builds with Ghost Axe, Ghost Flint, or Thief Dagger, which can be used to build up an enormous amount of extra resources because of the value of having extra enemies on the map. Each of these farming items is going to be worth more. Slingshots, of course, always very good because they will let you lifesteal and the bounces will help clear the crowd. Um, Submachine Gun is, as always, an excellent choice, as is Shotgun. Also, Shredder is very good because the explosion will help you clear the crowd as well. Um, I think, actually, that the best weapon on the loud is the Spear, though, because it sort of effectively has crowd clearing with the Pierce and... It gives you a lot of HP, although honestly it's all so close together that um, in my class guide I use the submachine gun, so definitely take that, or slingshot, or any of the farming weapons are very good, as are either the explosive weapons you have available. Loud has such a huge economy boost that you can get away with most weapons on this character, but I think that the one that is going to be the best overall by again a very very small margin is the spear for multitasker multitasker of course you are going to want to buy sticks you get 12 weapons and stick scales for every additional stick that you have so this is the natural weapon for this character the more sticks you have the better each individual stick is and also the better each individual stick levels up because as they gain levels they get more damage for each other stick you have so more sticks makes levels on your sticks more valuable as well stick is also very cheap which means that you can afford to buy 12 of them and doesn't need to be leveled up so Having a weapon that still scales really well at level 1 is really good. Additionally, um, the base damage is going to be so incredibly high that it overcomes the damage malice that Multitasker gets, although every po point of percentage damage you buy will increase the damage output of each individual stick a ton because they will have very high base damage. If you don't want to go with sticks, you could go with something like Spiky Shields. Those are also quite good and will scale very well. Um, they give you two really solid 
well, one really solid synergy tag and one decent synergy tag in Medieval and Blunt, and then you can get a second synergy tag with primitive weapons or something else if you want a more defensive build. You could also go for Engineering. I think that the Engineering build is really fun, and it's one of the few where you can get away with buying both wrenches and screwdrivers, because the multitasker has so many weapons that you can have mines and turrets both at the same time. And of course, you can never go wrong just buying every gun and just having all guns. So the stick build is certainly the best, but I don't think that those other builds are too far behind. If you, for whatever reason, don't want to go with sticks, then definitely take a look at spiky shields or engineering or guns. I think that the gun build is probably the most fun, but obviously you will just one-shot everything thanks to the high base damage of sticks. The wildling, you get your choice of all the primitive weapons, and you get 30% lifesteal with primitive weapons, so that would normally lend itself to the slingshot, because lifesteal has incredible synergy with the slingshot. Um, but the slingshot at level can't that can't go above level 2 is going to be a little bit worse than a slingshot that can level up, because slingshot really wants levels in order to scale. All level 2 slingshots is totally fine though, so you'll still win with the Wildling with just a bunch of level 2 slingshots, definitely not a problem there. But I think that you should probably just go with what the, the character wants you to start with and just go sticks. One advantage to this is that sticks don't really need to level up, they start really good already, and another advantage is that sticks are very, very cheap, and between the sticks being cheap and the lifesteal being built in, you won't need to spend a lot on weapons or on sustain and can spend it on other stats. So I think overall the best weapon is the stick, although slingshot or spear are both very close behind. The pacifist, the one weapon that is way, way better than all the others is the hand. It just bonks things away. 30 knockback is really good, and um, it's got plus three harvesting. You could go with spiky shield or taser. Shield has almost as much knockback, but um, and the taser slows, but both of those are not going to be as good as the hand, which gives you dodge and harvesting, and has built-in harvesting, so it's just going to help you get this character's economy going, which this character does have a worse economy than other characters, so anything that increases your economy is incredible. Hand is really good for pacifist, and definitely the best weapon for them. Gladiator. So the thing about Gladiator is you're going to end up with six different weapons, or five or six different weapons, depending on which weapon pool you pick. Only one melee pool has six or more weapons, and that's the primitive weapon pool, so you probably want to start with a primitive weapon. And the best primitive weapon to start with, melee primitive weapon at least, is the spear. And the spear is going to be most of your damage through most of the game. You're basically just going to buy the other six primitive weapons to boost the DPS of the spear. You may even want two spears and four other weapons and give up 20% attack speed just to have two good weapons on the spears, or something from a different category if you don't feel like you need all of the HP that you get from having six primitive weapons. Uh, there are seven primitive weapons, and the weapon you're going to want to avoid on the gladiator is the torch, because you won't be building elemental damage, and also torch kind of sucks. For the saver, your items increase in price and you get extra harvesting. Um, the saver, I think the, the best weapon is going to be spear, mostly just because it's the best weapon on this list. All of these other weapons are just not as good as the spear. You could go with thief dagger and try to really lean into the saver's mechanics, but I think that actually is, because the, the damage from materials doesn't really come into play until later, and the spear gives you a huge amount of free HP as well, it actually ends up being worth more money until quite a bit later in the game, as well as just having much better base damage and better scaling. So I think you're, you're just going to be best off going with the spear on the saber. For the sick, you need to be gaining HP. Um, you have 25% lifesteal, but you take damage every second. The sick want something that helps you lifesteal so that you can get that back, so that's the slingshot or the SMG or the scissors, 
and scissors will give you a ton of free regeneration over time. I think probably actually the best weapon for the sick is going to be the slingshot because it gives you the HP. It works really well with your natively built-in lifesteal, um, but SMG or scissors are both really good as well. The farmer. Have to take a drink of water here. Been talking for a while, trying to get a lot of recording done. Also, I should mention that if you are enjoying these guides and find them helpful, definitely take them a moment to like the video and leave a comment because it helps a ton with the algorithm, uh, letting other people see that. If you leave a comment, I always appreciate getting those. Let me know, I don't know, what movie did you see last? For me, it was the Dungeons and Dragons movie, which was pretty good. It, it was a fun, a fun two hours. Um, all right, so the farmer, the farmer just wants to pick up consumables, so we're gonna go with the pruner because you get consumables from that. It's really important that you don't take damage, but uh, the pruner will generate consumables, which generate harvesting. I think there's no other answer for the farmer that can be anywhere near as good as the pruner. Ghost only has three weapons to choose from. You get your choice of ethereal weapons. I think there's sort of two directions you can go with Ghost. You can either go with an even split, sort of 2-2-2 two, two, two of these weapons, or you can go with all Ghost Scepters and just only buy ranged damage. Um, if you're going all Ghost Scepters, obviously you start with Ghost Scepter, but if you're going an even split, which I think is generally a little bit better, you want to start with the Ghost Axe because it will help you clear the wave. You can't kill enough enemies in wave one to gain an HP from the Ghost Scepter. It's not possible, it doesn't attack fast enough, but the Ghost Axe will have the best wave clear for wave one and get you sort of the most economy right out the gate. So it's gonna be the best weapon to start with most of the time. The Speedy gives you extra speed and melee damage at, for every speed that you have and you can't stand still and you don't get armor. You might think that the best weapon for the speedy is the one that scales with speed, the jousting lance, but I actually think that that is not correct because the bonus speed that you get will still not help the jousting lance scale as well as other weapons. The jousting lance mostly just has high base damage rather than um, rather than scaling really well, because it just has 50% melee damage scaling, and you get melee damage from all of this, uh, melee damage from all the speed that you have anyways, so you just want stuff that scales really well with melee damage. The thing that I think you should think about for speedy is that the hardest part is just not dying by accidentally running into enemies. <clears throat> so, to my mind, the best weapon for speedy is actually the shuriken, because that lets you maintain distance and keep the, the field clear and scales pretty well with melee damage. Um, obviously it only has 25% scaling, but it's a, it's a ranged weapon and it attacks pretty frequently and it has the bounces. So building the free melee damage that you're gonna get from the speedy will help the shuriken go do really well as well. If you don't want to go shuriken, you could go spear or jousting lance, those are both fine, but I think that shuriken is gonna give you the smoothest ride most of the time with speedy. Entrepreneur has a huge damage reduction, and like most characters that have a huge damage reduction, the natural thing to do is just build engineering, so the best weapon is the wrench. Um, I know that for some folks on mobile, engineering builds really struggle, so if you are having trouble with that and you're on mobile because the wrench keeps knocking enemies into you, which is something I've heard is a real problem with mobile. Uh, try the shotgun, I think, is probably the best, and, and it does sort of suck that you have to deal with the damage malice, but the shotgun will help. You could also try hand, but if you're having trouble with the wrench knockback, then the hand knockback is probably also going to be bad. Um, it does seem like you might want to lean into the character with by building Thief Dagger and just buying a ton of stuff. And you can try that, but Thief Dagger really needs extra damage, and so the damage malice is going to hurt you a lot, I think. I would m rather go with the wrench. The Engineer, well, this one's pretty self-explanatory. You're an engineering build, you should go wrench. Any of these other weapons are going to be so much worse than the wrench for the Engineer. It's uh, That's sort of a challenge run only thing. Just, just buy the wrench. The Explorer... 
you're going to be running around just trying to break trees mostly and not actually trying to kill enemies, and you don't really want to spend money on trying to kill enemies, so I think the best weapon for the explorer for two reasons is the stick. One, you don't need to spend a lot of money on sticks because they're very cheap and you can leave them low level, um, and second, they are very short range and very easy to control what you're attacking, so you can run around breaking trees with them pretty easily. You could also go with the Cacti Club, um, which lets you break trees using the thorns, and that's kind of cool, but I think that the stick is just going to be better overall, because I, I really like the, the free damage that you get from this. Helps with the 40% damage scaling as well uh, quite a bit, and then you, you just have to repair that. The Doctor, you only have two weapon choices. Uh, I think the best weapon choice for the Doctor is random, honestly. Just more fun. But I think the Scissors is probably very slightly better than the Medical Gun, just because just it has access to the precise weapon tag, which gives you the option to use Tentacle, which you don't really need because you have tons of healing, but um, Hunting Trophy is really nice for this character. Either of these weapons is totally fine. The Doctor is just a very strong character. Hunter has plus 100 range and gets a damage from range. So the natural weapon, I think, is also the right one, and that is the crossbow. Scales with range, and you start with 100 range, so it's going to do pretty good damage already. Um, you really want to stay very far from enemies on this character, because max HP modifications reduced by 33% doesn't sound as... Uh, sound as bad as it is, and it is really, really bad. That is actually one of the harsher penalties available in Brotato. Max HP is so important, and off so often the thing that gets you killed that having it reduced is a problem. To mitigate that, you could try going Spears, but I think that Crossbow will help keep you alive more often, and the crit chance modification being increased means the precise tag will work better. Um, Crossbow is just going to do a lot of damage on, on this character, so it's just very good. Artificer only has four choices, because it's got basically two explosive weapons and two engineering weapons. I think you should avoid the engineering weapons, because they don't do any actual damage, so you're relying only on the constructs to uh, kill stuff. The, the wrench is fine, but the screwdriver is... Uh, and and that's really tough in the early waves, so I would I would just avoid both of these. Actually, I I started saying the wrench is fine, but it's not. Both of these are going to be really bad for you. Um, of the other two, I think that the shredder is slightly more consistent. So for the sort of actual best weapon for the artificer, pick the shredder and then just build range damage and kind of pretend it's just a normal gun class. Um, ignore building elemental damage and ignore the explosion size stuff and you'll you'll just be a gun class with a 75% bonus damage because of how the artificer works. I talk about this quite a bit in my artificer guide so definitely check that one out but I strongly encourage you to use the plank because it's, it's way more fun than doing that and you get to actually use the character's uh, abilities the way they're meant to be used. Arms dealer, well, I wonder what we're going to choose here. The pistol is the only weapon we have available. I think that uh, the Brotato devs really missed a trick by not having a random weapon option available for the arms dealer. That would always give you pistol, because that would just be funny. But in the absence of that, we're just taking pistol. Streamer has some of the most weapon options in the game, and I think that also has some of the fewest viable weapons in the in the game of characters that have like this many weapons available. Streamer is super difficult and you want to stand still all the time. So that means you you can pretty much ignore all these melee weapons unless you're going for a challenge run where you do like a no standing still streamer, in which case the melee weapons I guess are back on the table. Of the ranged weapons, the ones that are going to do the best for you are slingshots are very good for streamer because they will just help you clear and sustain with lifesteal. Um, wrenches are quite good because you have a, a damage penalty, but I actually personally find that the, and gain armor from structures, I actually personally find that the 
speed penalty is too bad for engineering builds to survive with wrenches. You need to be killing stuff really quickly because your move speed is going to be bad. So I want to just go for the highest damage build available and that's the smg so definitely again check out my streamer guide you can watch this in action but the smg i think is going to be the best option available for the streamer because it does the most damage and keeps you alive the best cyborg um cyborg is kind of tricks you because you start with a minigun it looks like it's going to be a ranged damage character and then you get engineering so you think hey i'm going to just build constructs like a normal engineering build but the difference between six turrets and five turrets is actually huge and the other thing about cyborg is that the tools are balanced around a base level of engineering which you don't get from them because when you have six tools you get the the plus five engineering from the tool synergy tag but cyborg has your engineering mods are reduced by 75 percent so you you have much worse tools than every other character so to compensate for that what you do is i you take the screwdriver and just build range damage and use the screwdriver just as a melee weapon from the when it from the damage scaling from engineering that the screwdriver has attached. Obviously, you can then add in other weapons that scale with engineering. I think the um, the Gatling laser does, I think, right at the end, or the drill, one of the legendary weapons anyways, is scales with engineering, so you can add that in. But other than that, you just use the screwdriver as a melee weapon during the engineering phase, and the minigun as a ranged weapon during the range phase. Um, and of course, I think at the time of recording, my most recent guide was with the cyborg, and I, I show you how this works in practice. The glutton. Glutton gets explosion damage whenever you pick up a consumable, and your consumables explode whenever you pick up a consumable. Just like the farmer, you should just buy the pruner. You need to farm consumable. You need to farm consumables. So picking up as many fruits as possible by growing as many gardens as possible is the way to go. So start with pruner and never look back. The Jack. So Jack has tons of extra damage, but enemies have even more extra health and there are fewer enemies. So the Jack does really well when given weapons that normally wouldn't do well because they have very high damage and sort of overkill enemies. So stuff like the laser gun is the usual pick for jack, laser gun, or spear, or jousting lance, all of which have like very high base damage, and that can be very powerful. I think that the best option in that case is the revolver, because Revolver has super high DPS, is one of the highest in the, in the game, second only actually to Laser Gun, um, in terms of raw DPS, but the Laser Gun still has problems with Overkill, and the Revolver, I think, doesn't, so you want to pretty much just pick Revolvers, although since you're a gun build, you can mix and match Revolvers and Laser Guns, or add in a submachine gun or something if you if you want to, but Revolver, just because of its raw DPS output, and because the the cooldown doesn't matter as much when there are fewer enemies on the field is the best bet for Jack. The Lich. Lich, you pretty much just want a weapon that will help you heal and that will help you life steal because you aren't doing damage from your weapons, you're doing damage from your passive. Um, of these, the weapons that help life steal the most are Scissors is pretty good, SMG is pretty good, and of course the weapon that we're going to go with, the Slingshot, is gives you tons of lifesteal because you have native lifesteal, it bounces all over the place, and it also gives you 15 HP, which is really good for the Lich, because you need that HP so you can continuously take damage. Apprentice gives you melee, ranged, elemental, and engineering damage as you level up, but you lose HP every time you level up. I think the most important thing on Apprentice is you just want a weapon that helps mitigate the downside because the upside is so good. So while you might sort of naturally be drawn to the Cacti Club or the Plank especially um, because you have multiple damage scaling options which scale really well with things that require multiple damage types to scale or the Lightning Shiv, I think that the best 
weapon for this is the slingshot. Slingshot just wants raw ranged damage to scale because it's got all these bounces, so it, that that helps it scale a lot, and it gives you 15 HP, which counteracts the apprentice's downside. The cryptid. So you want to run around and not break trees on the cryptid, and again, uh, I think the most important thing is just to have control over what you're attacking and to not have to spend too much on weapons. So just like its counterpart, the explorer, who wants two break trees, I think the cryptid wants to go with the stick. The stick lets you avoid breaking trees with the range penalty. It's You can uh, run around and very easily avoid killing trees. And the bonus uh, HP helps a lot with the cryptid's economy. Bonus HP and cheap cost of the stick helps a lot with the cryptid's economy. So minus materials dropped from enemies matters less when you're spending less on your weapon set. And the fact that the stick has a very controllable attack animation as opposed to a ranged weapon where you would accidentally kill trees. Uh, the stick is really good. Also, the extra HP scales really well with your dodge and HP regeneration bonuses, because of course both of those are going to multiply the HP that you're gaining. Fisherman just wants to buy bait and then kill the bait enemies. You will very quickly have way too much damage for the and uh, any other enemy to be threatening, so only the lampreys that you spawn matter, and you just need to kill those as quickly as possible. The best item to, for that, and the best item to help you survive through the lampreys, is the spear. It will pierce through all of them, so as soon as they spawn, you get a ton of damage. It scales super well with uh, percentage damage, which you're getting a ton of, because it has very high base damage. And... It's got a very long attack. It also gives you a ton, of eight, a ton of HP, which helps you not die immediately as soon as the lampreys spawn. I think that all other weapons are significantly further behind the spear on the fisherman. The golem. You can't heal, but you have a lot of HP, and you get extra HP. Armor is increased by 33%, and this matters a lot. And you get some bonuses when you have less than 50% health, but you shouldn't play around those. Given that we can't eight, can't heal and we need to defend ourselves, we're going to go with the most the best defensive option in the game. The spiky shield scales with armor, lets you kill stuff uh, very easily off of your bonus armor scaling, and also will keep you alive because you can just build armor and can ignore building damage. The golem actually kind of. Uh, ha has some shop advantages because you don't have to buy regeneration because you can't heal at all. So if you cut out yet another thing that you have to buy and don't have to buy melee or range damage, just buy armor, the golem actually sort of backdoors into being an economy character by just by making the shop contain much less stuff that you need to buy so you can focus only on buying the stats that matter. The king... Level 2 items, and you lose damage if you have level 1 weapons, you lose HP if you have level 1 items, um, but notice that all the king stuff starts at level 2, which is kind of nice for weapons that scale really well with levels. You could start with something like the circular saw as well, which isn't available to any other character and is a very good weapon. I think that the best uh, weapon for the king is really anything, but I think that overall you, you want free stats on the king because you are going to lose out on some max HP. So given that you're going to lose out on max HP and probably don't want to go primitive weapons because while you could go spears and that would be very good, you do have access to higher tier weapons. I think that the best weapon is going to be, again, the spiky shield. Damage scaling with armor, it increases as you level it up. Um, lots of luck and uh, gives you some maximum HP. Spiky Shield, I just think it's a great item on King and on pretty much every character. Although King is, is one of those characters where what weapon you choose doesn't matter as much as your overall strategy. So you could definitely go for SMG or Circular Saw or Spear. I think all of those would be fine. Circular Saw, I think, is, is pretty fun on King just because it's not available to any other character as a starting weapon. So that's kind of nice, but I think Spiky Shield is going to get you there most often. Renegade. You get extra projectiles, your projectiles pierce, um, and you get extra damage for every different tier 1 weapon you have. You have to shoot 
which is fine because you get extra projectiles. Well, if we get extra projectiles, we just want to shoot as often as possible, so we're coming back to, once again, the old standby. It's the submachine gun. Extra projectiles on this weapon are super powerful. One thing to kind of avoid is the shotgun because it just increases the projectile count by one. It doesn't... So weapons that already fire multiple projectiles, like shotguns, like higher leveled tasers, and so on, you actually want to avoid on the Renegade um, and Shredders. The, the ones that you want are ones that only fire a single projectile, but frequently, like submachine guns. Special mention also for the Ghost Scepter, because individual Ghost Scepters can get more kills since they're firing more projectiles, but submachine gun, I think, is, is the way to go on this one. One-armed. This gives you extra attack speed, damage modifications are doubled, but you only get one weapon. The best, the one-armed is fun because the best starting weapon is actually different from the best ending weapon. All right, just gotta drink a little water again. Um, and the best starting weapon on the one-armed is the ghost axe. Your damage modifications are doubled, increased by 100%, and the Ghost Axe will let you farm for the first several waves. You can just farm bonus damage, and then you'll eventually switch to a weapon that multi-hits when you can no longer clear the wave just with the Ghost Axe completely, using something like Lightning Shiv or Slingshot as your end game weapon, but <coughs> the Ghost Axe is going to get you there as your starting weapon every time. The bull doesn't get a weapon, so you just you hit you hit danger five and you go. The soldier, I think, is a rare case where we have access to the submachine gun, but actually aren't going to go with it. Although you certainly couldn't be faulted for doing so. But the soldier, I think, actually has sort of special synergy with the revolver, just because you attack so fast and because you can use the time that the revolver is cooling down to reposition yourself on the soldier if you're counting shots. So I think that you should go with the revolver as your starting weapon, although really any of these weapons are going to get you there, except uh, wand is probably pretty bad, knife is pretty bad, but any of the guns is, is great on soldier, so just pick up any of those. Masochist. You gain damage when you take damage. Um, and you just need to need to heal through it and tank through it. So we're going to go with, once again, when we need a tanky character and need to take damage, the best weapon is almost always going to be Spiky Shield. That lets you just buy armor. And, of course, it scales with the eight armor that you already have, which means that the Spiky Shields are doing a uh, pretty respectable damage already. You don't see it here because we haven't taken any hits on the Masochist yet, but... If you just need to walk into a bunch of enemies, Spiky Shield is your guy. The Knight, you get melee damage for every armor you have, um, and you have plus five armor. I think that just because it's the only character that can start with it, and it's a really sweet weapon, the best weapon for the Knight is the Sword. The melee damage scaling is really good. Sword is just a very good weapon. Blade and Medieval are actually great weapon tags to have on the Knight. And you don't need the attack speed as much on the knight because um, your weapons hit so hard if you have sword. So you can you can pick this up. I think that of these weapons, the ones you want, sword is, is likely the best, although lance is fine. And spiky shield actually works pretty well on the knight anyways, um, even though the melee damage scaling is wasted just because you start with five armor and level two spiky shields are great. Uh... And you don't really need attack speed on Spiky Shield that much either. But I think that the sword plays into the strength of the knight the best. And finally, we come to the demon. So, demon has access to a few uh, weapons, but I think only one of them makes any sense for demon, really. You spend your maximum HP in order to buy items in the shop, so we take the weapon that gives us maximum HP, the Ghost Scepter. Just farm with six Ghost Scepters, as much HP as you can, and that will let you buy stuff in the shop. Helps a lot on the demon. All right, my friends, this has been every single character in Vanilla Brotato and the best weapon for them. As always, I hope that you have enjoyed this, and, you know, let me know if you have any picks that you would make differently. Um, always appreciate 
the discussions that we get in comments and very open to feedback, but I think that these picks are going to be best, or at least close enough to best, that you'll win very easily if these are your starting weapons on these characters. Alright, my friends, as always, you can like the video or leave comments for the algorithm, subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. You can also leave a, a super thanks or become a channel member if you feel inclined to give me money. I certainly would not turn that down. And as always, hope you're doing well, and I'll catch you next time.